the X-cut sled for the Fusion F2 table saw. It's got a really nice smooth sliding action. Cutouts act as nice handles, plus reduce the weight as well as these angled cutouts. Keep the bulk and the weight of the sled to a minimum. It's got a single piece four foot top track for added stability as well as this unique cross bridge. And this ties the two sides of the sled together so we can leave it open for wide panel cuts yet the sides of the panel can't splay open and ruin the cut. So it's an interesting design and it's working really well for us on the Fusion F2 saw. So with a little double-sided tape on our template for the handle cutouts, we can set those right in position over our layout lines and just press them in place. From there, we'll route them out with a two-step process, the first of which uses a spiral bit and a template guide, and we'll go ahead and rough that out. So here's the router setup for our first pass, cutting out the handle openings. This is just a half inch spiral bit with a guide bushing that rides around the inside of the template and that makes the first pass and we'll clean it up later with a bearing guided bit. For the second pass on the handle openings, we'll use this bearing guided spiral bit. It's a little larger diameter and makes a real clean cut. And then just pop your template off and move on to the next opening. The result is a nice clean cut with minimal tear out top and bottom. Finish up the hand holes by easing the edges with a small round over bit and assemble a black pipe cross bridge with half inch iron pipe and fittings. Clean up the iron pipe with a little bit of mineral spirits and then coat it with some hammered paint. All right, let's make these angled cuts on either end and at the leading edge of the cross-cut sled to trim some weight. and then make a tiny chamfer on the underside of the fence for a dust relief. And then just pre-drill a hole on either side of the fence so you can get things aligned. And from there you can go ahead and attach the fence with a couple of drywall screws. Then we'll just go ahead and pre-drill for our mounting screws along the top track. And then you can just go ahead and run in your mounting screws. And then for the piece that makes this crosscut sled different than others, this high bridge from iron pipe that will connect the two corners of the sled so that when we make our initial pass that opens up the cut in the sled, everything will be nice and stable. Just take a minute to confirm that this front edge of the table saw is dead square to the blade and ours is set just right. Go ahead and trim the miter bars as needed. We're going to take about four inches off the end of each bar to work with our outfeed table. So 
So go ahead and toss a few washers into the miter slots and then you'll be able to drop the miter bar right in place. We've counterbored a few spots on the underside for mounting screws. We'll drop those in so that they stick out past the cast iron about an inch on this end and they'll stick a few inches beyond the sled on the far end. So we'll go ahead and get some double-sided sticky tape on these miter bars and we'll drop the sled in place. All right, well let's go ahead and slide that sled into rough position. I've got a line on the sled where I'd like the approximate cut line to be. And so we'll set that down on the double-sided tape and get things positioned where they need to be so we can attach our runners with screws from underneath. Slide the sled far enough out to access the screw holes and attach the miter bars with appropriate screws. This aluminum track extrusion does a lot to keep the plywood fence perfectly straight, but just to be on the safe side, we'll clamp a straight edge on the front of the fence just to confirm that everything stays straight as we drive the rest of the screws from underneath. And you can slide it out a little further and repeat the process. Okay, so at this point we'll turn on the saw and slowly raise the blade so that we can get a handle on squaring the fence permanently to the sled. So we'll check the fence for squareness to the blade. Coming up alongside the carbide teeth, we're flush at this end and there's a slight gap at this end so that tells me I need to move this end of the fence forward slightly and we'll do that by loosening the screws under the fence and making a slight adjustment. Move the fence forward and strike a line here so you know exactly where to set your fence. And then with the fence readjusted, recheck for square. Because of the height of my square, I'm touching right on the carbide teeth on both the front and back, and I'm just kissing the square on both sides. Perfectly square right there. I'm happy with that. Once you have the sled tuned and sliding smoothly, we can go ahead and raise the blade and complete the through cut. Let's do that now. Let's raise the blade up so it'll just complete the cut in the three-quarter sled and make that cut. So now compared to most sleds, we have the major advantage of this crossbar supporting the two corners, fixing the position of the sled so this can't splay open when in storage. When it's in use, not only does the crossbar prevent it from splaying open, but so do the miter bars that are locked in the miter slots. This is really just for when you're hanging it on the wall, you don't want it flexing around. Big advantage here, it lets larger panels slide through so you can cut oversized plywood when needed. The crossbar makes a pretty nice handle when carting it around the shop, too. We'll wipe a quick coat of shellac seal coat on the sled to seal it up. And then we'll just be ready for some accessories. So that's the kind of sliding action we're looking for with a big sled on aluminum runners. We've even got some accessories. There's a sliding handle. I like to have that positioned just about here so it's right in line with this runner but it also acts as a stop for your hand so your hand can either be on the handle or on this side of the handle and this is the safety zone. So makes a really nice way to cut long pieces up to 36, 37 inches long. The one main difference that separates this from other crosscut sleds is this cross bridge is open so you can cut deep panels even on a mid-sized crosscut sled. We've got some great accessories here, a flip stop that slides the length of the track, can be maneuvered up when not in use and flip down for repeated cuts or a production stop which is handy if you just have to make cut after cut after cut at the same length you might use this one. 
It's a great sled and I just can't believe how smoothly it slides for being a big sled on this Fusion F2. Let's give it a try. Nice, clean, accurate cuts that are square every time. We've got automatic dust collection on the F2, so all I need to do is press the green start button and everything comes on automatically. Perfectly clean cuts that are square and accurate every time. What else could you want from a crosscut sled? That's the X-Cut sled, folks. Make one for your F2. For all the dimensions and the rest of the details you need to build this X-Cut sled, head over to my channel, The Thoughtful Woodworker.